Good evening and welcome to the April episode of School Belong You. We hope that teachers and students have enjoyed their holiday break and are looking forward to this term. In this episode, we will bring to you the importance of early childhood care and education, teachers' profiles, including students' nutritional health values. In this segment, we feature the importance of everyday health advice for students as you begin term two. Congratulations teachers and students for successfully completing the first term of the 2014 academic year. To fully complete the 2014 academic year successfully, students and teachers are encouraged to eat healthy and live healthy lifestyles. One of the most important routines is to drink a lot of water. Research suggests that drinking water helps students concentrate in class and will aid information retention. Giving your child healthy, nutritious food is also very, very important. It is very important for their uh, development. And I must say that if you f feed your child nutritious food before they go to school, they actually will concentrate better in school and do their work very well. One of the important things students should always remember is going to sleep at the right time. Students especially should sleep before 10 p.m. Studies have found going to bed earlier gives students better brain power and health. Just because you are on holidays doesn't mean you can stay up late. Get enough rest and go to sleep at the right times. Always eat breakfast before going to school because researchers have shown that it is not healthy to have an empty stomach all day long. Another reason you need to eat breakfast is because your body needs food to use as energy needed for the day. Make sure to eat healthy. Lots of fruits, nuts and vegetables will make you healthy, wealthy and wise. Although students may be busy with their schoolwork, it is important for them to exercise regularly. Exercise is not only important for the health, but it also enables learning abilities and increases concentration. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with School Belong You after the break. Welcome back to School Belong You. In this segment, we will meet teachers and students in the National Capital District. Teachers play a very important role in educating the young in our country. They make sure that children are given the best every year. Education is the most important tool because with it, you can change the world. Nelson Mandela. We will meet a very hardworking teacher from Car Memorial Primary School in the National Capital District. Uh, of all the occupation or profession that, um, that, was, you know, that is around the place. I, I chose to be a teacher and it goes back a long way. I was uh, doing my grade three, in fact grade three when the drive to become a teacher came very strong. I look after the upper primary, grade six, seven and eight. It's very challenging when you are talking to children who are exposed to many things okay, due to modern technology and so one of the challenges I, I find as a teacher here is that you know, children, when, when they don't listen, children don't, don't listen and uh, they try to challenge you with their little behaviors around the place. So yeah, and another thing is um, because we live in a teach, you know, city, teachers they live far from the school and one challenge is to monitor your teachers who come in, you know, the time they're convenient for them and kids are not attended to. 
we don't wait until end of the term and have the parents to come and get their report cards and that. Here, we, when we see behaviors getting out of hand, we call parents. And that method, we have seen that it, it works very well because when you leave it too long, parents are not made aware of their children's behavior and you leave it too long, you will find that parents, they get frustrated even when you want to make the last choice to have the student uh, leave the school. That is the difficult part, but I've seen when we have day-to-day -day, uh, conferencing with parents, okay, we tackle some of those problems because we need to establish that understanding between the parent and the school and the teacher and the child. A lot of times parents, they try to leave the work of looking after their children to the teachers in the classroom. And some don't even visit the school to find out how their children are doing. And that is one thing um, we would like to encourage as a teacher, I would like to encourage parents and guardians, just call in anytime, not when the child is in problem or in trouble that you want to visit the school. And working together, you know, in partnership is one thing that we want to promote. For the students, okay, we, I can say from my experience in this school, uh, they have to take ownership of their learning. They must feel, you know, feel the need to be helping themselves. Another teacher that we also met this month is Mr. Matthew Maito from Port Moresby National High School. I actually chose uh, teaching as my career because I was particularly interested in uh, teaching children. In general, uh, we don't very much have a behavioral problem here in school. Our students actually are very, very good. Most probably, I would say, uh, the students coming to this school are coming to school on their own merits with a, with a quite very high, uh, very high grades in, uh, in their certificates. I would very much expect parents to make sure that their children are very much fully aware of our school rules and philosophy. Our school rules, like any other schools, we all have very much in common. The primary objective of our students to be elite students. At the end of the day, they are very literate. They should be able to walk into and get jobs. So we also want uh, our parents to help us in terms of um, uh, helping the children not only in the pocket money for uh, bus fare and all other things, but uh, they must also look at the, um, the individual, their own little children there to make sure, or, well, in, in Palm National High School we have uh, students well over the age of uh, 15, 16 years. So these children are in the adolescence period and uh, they are quite curious to explore the world. And that's where parents will have to really come out and do some bit of control measures. Some parents do think, oh, our children are already over the age of 16, so let them explore. But still, they should have a little bit of string tied to their students, I mean to their children. So long as the children are students in school, they must, parents must also have some bit of control over them. The analogy, analogy of uh, students to teachers is almost like farmer and his crops. When a farmer waters his crops every day and then when the crop is ready and uh, is harvested and put on a market stall, it goes off very quickly. The customers buy them very quickly. So I always tell my students, you are very lucky. You are not like the, the crops, the vegetables that the farmer grows. You are human being, whatever the teacher teaches you, and with your own knowledge and with the help of your parents, you can also move about and then stretch out and then dig up some knowledge from books. And nowadays, uh, a lot of our students are very advantaged. They have uh, parents who have uh, bought them laptops and other things, uh, computers, so they can ac have access into these things. And then from there, they will be able to double their knowledge from what the teacher teaches inside the classroom and then to what they do on their own ways to um, do some bit of research to enrich themselves. So this is what we always tell them. You are more like the, cash, uh, the, the vegetables that, are, that farmers put on that stall, but you are much more fortunate those, than those vegetables. They rely heavily on the farmers. You must not rely heavily on the teachers. Teachers teach you, but you have the, the ability to move about and then grab some knowledge for yourself. 
So don't play up with your life. Don't play up with your education. You look after education like an egg, because once you drop the egg and it breaks, there's no future. Uh, my judgment, uh, the modern students are not reading books. Their spellings um, are terrible because they're too much using these uh, mobile phones and texting away using the uh, short forms or these kinds of things. And when we tell them to write a good sentence with a good spelling like, uh, for instance, please, instead of P-L-E-A-S-E, -E, they write P-L-I-S. <laughs> I would also like to appeal to the parents, don't just say it's holiday, let them relax. No, you've got to have some bit of uh, control measures to prevent your child from getting into trouble. So how do you get, stop your child from getting into trouble? Uh, sometimes they get into, into uh, other links with other friends and then they do something that is terribly wrong. Sometimes it's, it could be fatal that uh, they will not return home in the evening. So parents will have to be extra careful. Teachers are extremely important in all the societies. They are the ones who educate our children, who will become the leaders in the next generation. I like this school because of the friendly environment and the teachers' friendly commitments which help us to grow up spiritually and to become good citizens of Papua New Guinea. What I like about the school is we are encouraged to learn four sides of life, physical, social, mental and spiritual. Stay tuned to School Belonging. We'll be back after the break. Hello, if you just joined us, welcome to School Belong You. In this segment, we take a look at the importance of early childhood care and education. A week-long workshop which was held in Medang from the 7th to the 12th of this month brought out the significance of early childhood care and education in Papua New Guinea. Early childhood care education, or ECCE, is a very important start to life for the young children in Papua New Guinea. A first ever public-private partnership is taking early childhood care and development to new heights. More than 90 people from diverse backgrounds representing the government, early childhood care service providers, non-government organizations, freelance creative artists were trained last week in Medang. Now, what we're doing this week is really part of a bigger picture. This week we're going to be developing innovative communication materials for children and about children. But it has to be part of a much bigger picture. It has to be part of what is happening at homes, in the communities, in our schools, and as part of a policy that you will be developing in early childhood care and education. And what we want to do in all this big, huge effort is we want to reach children, families, the teachers, community, and we also want to mobilize people so that they are developing their own programs. Anywhere in the world, it is important for government to take initiatives. The workshop was organized by the so Department of Education yeah. with UNICEF's so support. An UNICEF brought in an international expert, Barbara Kalaki, to guide and facilitate this unique workshop. I'm really, really impressed. You need to hold us accountable. You need to make sure that the one week or the hard work we have put, it doesn't go in vain. You have to continue with us. You have to make sure that we stay aligned. That means UNICEF and the Department of Education. We keep on saying Department of Education, but it's not Department of Education only. We have Department of Health, Community Development, and there are others also that can participate when you are talking of early ECCD. As we know, you know, extensive research tells us that children who enroll in ECCE centers 
are healthy, happy, and learning children. This early learning enhances their school motivation and success. It reduces class repetition and school dropout, which we have is a major problem for us here. When I'm attending this workshop, I feel like it is a pathway which UNICEF are creating to, 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 to educate, uh, educate a child and also to care for a child at home. And I think this, is, this should be the, uh, the right process in terms of like when designing policies on that and it has to be more, more outcome based so that the child will benefit. Okay, what is the best? And it's the first of its kind, uh, the conference is the first of its kind, but bringing everybody from media background to education background and all that, I'm sure it will give a very different perspective of approaches on how to tackle, tackle um, educating children, especially from zero to five and then from six onwards to ten, you know. It's, it's quite different and it gives us a, a, a much, much better perspective of how to approach children. And I know that from this we will have even better children for Papua New Guinea in the future. This workshop uh, is definitely an eye-opener for me because uh, I deal directly with uh, I'm a service provider and I deal directly with uh, all forms of child abuses and um, I learned a lot of things from this workshop. I learned about uh, how I can, because we have playtime for children which we, which we um, teach them on the safety plans of prevention of sexual abuse, child sexual abuse. So um, the, the things that I've learned from this workshop will definitely assist me in my awareness outreach and also um, we talk but now that i'm seeing that we can actually write up books for them to for us to read to them and also for the parents to look after the children um, i'm a teacher for the hearing impaired children the hearing impaired and the deaf children here in medeng um, the work i do here is to teach them and also provide um, help to the teachers and schools that are taking deaf and hearing impaired children and also um, identify children at a very early stage where they have hearing impairment or they are born with this deafness and uh, try to help the parents as to how they can help their children at home, start them from home into school and onwards. Okay, what is the best? Yeah, well I learned a lot of things. There were a lot of issues that were pres that was presented and um, much of the research that was presented I thought was really informative and um, it really helped us as the participants to prepare our communication materials. This workshop has uh, taught me um, uh, the child's development in terms of learning starts early as um, when the child is conceived and so um, with that and by giving the child the confidence at that early stage brings about a lot of uh, positive uh, outcomes in the child's uh, present in growing up as a, as a human being and also in future as well. This great team completed a six-day pioneering workshop on getting ready for school and life, innovative communication for early childhood care and development. These are some of the productions the team completed with the one week workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Flower Sand, bien time by Kama One Flower, PNC Kumul player. Children see, children do. I hope you enjoyed the productions from our very own Papua New Guineans. Please stay with us on School Belong You. In this segment, we take a look at a conference hosted by Dr. Tapo, Secretary for Education, held last week to farewell Miss Barbara Kolaki, who has worked for the renowned children's TV program, Sesame Street, as program director. Miss Kolaki, now an international expert in early childhood care and education, was in the country at the invitation of UNICEF, where she facilitated a week-long workshop held in Medang for the participants from both the government and private sectors. The Department of Education has further cemented its partnership with UNICEF in the delivery of education in the country. This time, both organizations have diverted their attention to early childhood care and education, with the alignment of the other key departments, such as health and community development. In a recent joint conference held in Port Moresby by UNICEF and the Department of Education, both leaders of these two very important organizations spoke on important education-related subjects. More so was on the workshop held in Medang for early childhood care and development. In explaining the mandate of UNICEF in PNG, UNICEF's country representative, Mr. Bapa Dan Bapa, said that UNICEF, as a body of the UN, has a universal mandate of dealing with children. In PNG, UNICEF works with departments like education, health and community development, addressing issues affecting children. We, our mandate, as you know, is children. And uh, we have been here for many years in the country, and uh, we've been working with many, many uh, uh, the department, civil society, other NGOs, uh, faith-based organizations in the country. Uh, right now, uh, we have a country program which started in 2012, which will end in 2015. And we work with the Department of Education as kind of the biggest program under UNICEF cooperation with government. And um, at the same time, we work with the Department of Health for health and nutrition issues, HIV. Uh, then we work with community development where we talk about uh, social welfare and uh, for children, we look at them, pick media, all those areas. Planning also, we work with them on statistics, um, uh, birth registration, um, all those areas. So we work with many, many different departmental organizations, uh, departments of the government. UNICEF's continued support and commitment in improving the level of education in the country of meeting international targets was again displayed when the organization brought in an international expert who had consulted widely for UNICEF in a number of developing countries. With this, capacity building training in PNG is now geared up in addressing early childhood care and education needs. This workshop you know, getting ready for school and life. Innovative communication for early childhood care and development was supported by UNICEF. As one of our assistants to the Department of Education, Health, 
community development as they move forward toward a national ECCD policy and program implementation. As I mentioned before, these are key when we talk of early childhood care and development. Uh, these departments in government are the key departments, you know, to uh, lead us in the processes and also in the implementation. Because of this, you know, with the agreement of the Department of Education, UNICEF brought in an international expert, which some of us, uh, she's here in the room with us, Barbara Koloki, to guide and facilitate this unique workshop. Barbara has worked as UNICEF staff and consultant for 30 years, and she has facilitated such workshops in over 25 countries. She was the first program director for Sesame Street. You know that program in, in the US, and which is you know a household name all over the world. And for children, all children, they know that program. And in this position, she was responsible for integrating children and adults with disabilities on the show, as well as mobilizing many of the most marginalized groups on how they can effectively use the TV series with their children. This workshop is, um, uh, is, is pioneering in many ways. If you look at uh, the number of people that we have uh, that were invited, uh, participated in this workshop, about 93 participants. From government, Department of Community Development, Department of Education, Department of Health. We have many in national and international NGOs, including those working with most marginalized children and families, people with disabilities, a wide range of creative national talent, including scriptwriters, illustrators, photographers, graphic designers, animators, television and radio production teams, and musicians. We also have composers there. It is unique also because the workshop was based on a whole child approach that supports the holistic care, development, protection, and participation of children. The workshop included actual productions. Sessions were based on international research from the areas of ECD, child protection and effective media production. The teams then produced culturally specific and developmentally appropriate media, including children's illustrated and photo-based books, posters for caregivers, radio spot for children and adults, uh, TV sport for children and adults and anima animation. As you will see, the productions are simple, practical, many are bilingual or in local languages, and they are magical. This is a key component in being effective. The workshop was based on communication for development approach. This means that communication is only one part of larger strategy of communication community mobilization, effective utilization and quality advocacy and implementation. The core principle of C4D, which is community for development, is that the most effective development only occurs when communities, including children, become agents of change in their own lives. The new pioneer in communication approach will promote individual and social transformation of ECC. To achieve the Vision 2050, it is essential to get the foundations right. This is according to Dr. Michael Tapo, Secretary for Department of Education. Dr. Tapo said nurturing children aged 0 to 5 is intrinsic to adequately preparing children before starting their formal education years. Over the years, in terms of education, very little attention has been paid to children during their most infant years of development. However, this will no longer be the case given to the partnership between Department of Education, Department of Health, and Department of Community Development with UNICEF. And so this conference, this media is trying to announce to the people of Papua New Guinea that if you want to talk about quality or you want to talk about standards of education and you want to bring Papua New Guineans to reach the vision which they call the 2050 vision where Papua New Guineans are healthy, they are able to be healthy, 
and uh, they, in terms of they're wealthy, they can do it and do it, and they're smart. The way to do it is from the zero to six years old is where we have to nurture that. So this conference is being called for the rest of the nations to realize for us to nurture that development. That's number one I would like to announce to uh, people that education is one of those enabler. We would like to make sure we run hand in hand with the United Nations and more particularly UNICEF to be able to see that happen in Papua New Guinea. So the children who, are, who join us uh, from home environment when they are between six and uh, uh, when they are between zero and six years, when they join us, some of them are not ready for various reasons. And some of them are born not lucky. All right? Nutrition may be one of those. Home environment may not be, the father and mother not look after the children, so they, they, they come to school not ready to, for, for school. And some of them are born, uh, because of that, they are born uh, with, with various forms of disabilities, either with eyesight, with, with the mentality, with their mental, with their handicap. And there are other forms of uh, handicap that our children are not ready to learn. But nevertheless, education <laughs> has to provide the means for which they will be able to use their abilities in whatever form there is to where they have to go. All right? And so the, that is where education uh, uh, is coming to support it. So this workshop that was in, held in Medang is to be able to put together materials or information that will be communicated through education department, through health, through uh, other government departments, to be able to come hand in hand to make sure that their children who are experiencing any form of uh, uh, disabilities will be able to enjoy their life through, uh, uh, through the, those processes that they go through in life. And the children who come through the education system, likewise, will be able to have those resources available for them. Quality education for all is now the impetus behind the Department of Education's cravings for continuous improvement. Reaching out to whatever expertise that PNG has to offer in developing learning resources and so forth is a way forward for innovative and inclusive learning. And furthermore, getting people with diverse backgrounds from all over PNG to attend the Medang workshop is indeed a milestone, which perhaps is just only the beginning of more good things to come. Welcome back to School Belong You. We take a look at the recent joint conference by the Department of Education and UNICEF on the workshop held in Medang. Present at the press conference was the Secretary for Education, Dr. Michael Tapo, and UNICEF's country representative, Mr. Baba Danbapa. Dr. Tapo, in farewelling Mrs. Barbara Kalaki, also took the opportunity to bring updates on what his department is doing to improve the level of education in the country. Dr. Tapo also challenged the participants to use what they gained during the workshop. He also stated that the department has taken on board the workshop outcomes and will run with it as part of its innovative approach to learning. What we do well, we should tell the rest of the nations about what we're doing. It's not necessarily because it's education sector, but it's supposed to be people for Papua New Guinea in terms of what are some of the things, the milestones that we achieve together with our partner development uh, that they are with us, like UNICEF, like all the other development partners who are in Papua New Guinea, we're supposed to work hand in hand to complement each other, to support each other, because at the end of the day we measure each other in terms of indicators, universal indicators in terms of where are we in terms of our children. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's because it's health responsibility or community development or uh, non-government organization or our, women, our folks at home or us in education <coughs> department, but when it comes to human development, uh, is everybody connected to that that uh, has to measure where we are uh, around the world. So uh, for us, this thank you means that. In, in, in terms that when we measure up, when we go and report to various international organizations, we want to try and get a feel where Papua New Guinea is in terms of people with disabilities or inclusive education for, for those specific to that area. And in terms of our 
uh, people who participate in the various service organizations, for us women and girls are very part of the group that are, are actually not in everything we do are not um, involved that uh, and participate fully. So education, health and community development try in their way one, in one way or the other to try and make sure that their policies, their planning, their strategic uh, activities, strategic plans and activities do measure up in terms of giving girls and women and people living with uh, uh, various forms of disabilities to participate in uh, during their life in terms of the development. And the people who are fortunate in terms of accessing school education for which uh, the, um, uh, that benefited from whatever developed in Medang will continue. We have now picked that one up and you will see from here onward from school from you program to talk back and to everything television is going to do. I had a meeting with the television people personal about an hour ago um, to be make sure that they continue to be to, to mirror the good work that we have done in Medan to now sustain it and that the practice we develop in Medan will roll out to other government departments and uh, our non-government organization to see that we reach out as many uh, as m many people as we can in terms of human development. Education is about human development, or if you like, human capacity, or if you like, human resource. Uh, they're different words, but they're same, uh, similar meaning, all right, in terms of what we do. We're about addressing the human race, and our Papua New Guinea society, of course. That's what we are about. And so, um, with or without health department, or with or without community development, if education begins, I know everybody else will come on board. So uh, any childhood care and education or development or whatever term you want to use, um, education can address them, can begin to get the society to realize the significance of uh, zero to five to six years or to the 14 years or to 18 years of education for where the child begins from womb to whatever they, 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 they go. And so that's a very important part. So we're a main, uh, main player, education, and therefore we need to move with it and now other uh, land departments will join us. And I know health and education are also with us because health in particular, uh, I've got a free health. This is uh, looking at the when, the, uh, when the, the death we live. So every child that is born into, into the world must be able to be looked after from the start till the end. And so uh, access to free health will become a reality one day. And I think with the current government support to free health, uh, our people our in the village and our people in the various work sectors will benefit from free health. Education, of course, you know, we are already into it. We got um, <coughs> subsidized and free education. And hopefully come 2015, 2016, given the resources that has now been made available, compulsory education will come into play. It means every child that begins five year or six year old child will continue to go to receive education without being pushed out of the system. That means that when they begin elementary prep, they will stay in school until the 17 or 18 years or 19 years of education pending when they start, what age they start, and not be pushed out of the school system. So education is already on another level of um, trying to make sure that every child that begins either five year or six year old or seven year old that begins uh, elementary prep will stay in school until they complete 13, 14 or 15 years of um, school education. So there'll be no more dropout at uh, grade eight and there'll be no more good dropout at grade 10. They will go all the way. So we are already on to that in saving up the policy and the Department of Education is doing that. This is human development and education is the tool for them. So, people... Furthermore, the Education Secretary also made a commitment to roll out the outcomes of the Medang Workshop as part of its education materials to resource various school systems or special education resource centers for people living with all forms of disabilities. People like Barbara who's come here is come at a time that we now need to put words into practice. All right, you now need to put accents into practice. The development of those resource ma material has been very slow and has not actually measured. And uh, this week's meeting with the top management and uh, uh, secretary staff meeting, I've already said, 
that whatever was developed in Medan will soon, after the report is written, and all those things that we have developed will now move from us to um, the uh, Board of Studies. And they, you, uh, people, I hope Barbara has gone with those of you who got the thinking words or the education words to now, speak to the Board of Studies to now roll out all this program so that it is approved. And then our job, UNICEF and other development partners and other non-government organizations and other providers, together with the Department of Education, we will now materialize things that have been developed plus any more so that it can become part of the material development to make sure that people going through various school systems, whether through the, the uh, education system, um, or those going to from elementary all the way, or those going to special education resource centers for people with various forms of disabilities through inclusive education will benefit. Welcome back to School Belong You. We take a look at the recent joint conference by the Department of Education and UNICEF on the workshop held in Medang. Present at the press conference was the Secretary for Education, Dr. Michael Tapo, and UNICEF's country representative, Mr. Baba Danbapa. I love my the proudest of the people present at the luncheon was the country's guest and workshops facilitator, Ms. Barbara Kalaki. Ms. Kalaki, although sad to miss many of her friends, most of whom she came to know during the short but highly interactive workshop, described her experience in PNG as one of the best ever. Although Ms. Kalaki comes from the United States of America, she spent 25 years working in the Asia Pacific region. And having worked with other developing countries of the region, Barbara brought with her a wealth of experience which she managed to instill to the workshop participants in one week. I love my time in PNG. I, I wish that I wasn't leaving. Uh, I had one of my best ever workshops with a terrific bunch of 93 people who were creative, some of them working in the media, some of them private sector, people from different ministries here in PNG, and they produced some of the most marvelous products for young children and their families. Furthermore, Ms. Kalaki also spoke highly of the workshop participants and described the work they did during the workshop as some of the best in the world. Ms. Kalaki also left a challenge to the workshop participants to integrate whatever knowledge they had gained during the workshop into their personal experiences and their professions. The workshop participants were just fabulous. Um, I think they came from a wide range of backgrounds, but there were some of the most creative musicians, composers, television producers, script writers, illustrators, graphic designers, photographers. I could go on and on. Uh, they were tremendous. And I think that two things we're looking for in the future. We're looking for how what we developed can now get to every child and family in PNG, especially how can they get to the most marginalized families and most marginalized children. And then the second thing that we're hoping for is that the participants who were there, they're all working in their various professions. How can they integrate what we experienced last week together into their own life and their professions, whether they are in TV or print media, private sector, etc. In addition, Barbara said that PNG has all the resources and can produce world-class programs for all children. And excited in the outstanding work produced during the Medang workshop, Ms. Kalaki could not wait to show the materials produced in the U.S. and in the Solomon Islands. Her next country of visit as part of extensive work on Early Childhood Care Development, or ECCD. I am 100% sure that you have everything you need here in PNG. Uh, the work that we did last week was definitely international standard. The quality of what they produced, 
the way they produced it, the way they worked together. Um, it is, I'm, I'm going to take it back to the people in the United States and show them. I'm going to take my next workshop is in the Solomon Islands. I'm going to take your work and show the people there to show them that what PNG people can do is some of the best in the world. It means togetherness, togetherness. Although the Merang workshop was short, it however generated a feeling of enthusiasm among the participants, many of whom already are looking ahead to building a network of professionals whose work can be drawn upon by the Department of Education and other stakeholders such as the Department of Health and the Department of Community Development. And talking on behalf of the many participants of the workshop, these were some of the participants' responses. Uh, early childhood care development workshop um, for communication, communication for development workshop that was conducted by Barbara. Uh, uh, that was fantastic, I would say. It was amazing to see people from all different, different government departments, um, NGOs, um, the, the, the CBOs, and also the F, uh, not much from the, 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 the churches, but what we saw was from the, the creative media, the personals who were the script writers, the camera personals, um, the animators, and the photographers. And on top of that, we had students from University of Goroka with their social media. We have um, students from University of Papua New Guinea, and we also have um, students from Divine Word were invited. However, they could not be fully uh, part of, they couldn't participate fully in the workshop because of one of the issues of the students, one of the, the students was uh, killed in, in one of those clashes. Therefore, they couldn't participate, but you know, on top of everything, it was a great, capacity building for all those who were who attended the workshop and I'm, sh I'm sure uh, from the ECCD service providers and the NGOs um, like we also had Book Belong Pikinini, Save the Children and um, we everyone kind of said that that was the best workshop ever that was created uh, that was um, conducted in Papua New Guinea and especially having Barbara um, who has worked with Sesame Street to be here to develop something for children and with children was amazing. Thank you. As a way forward, Ms. Patuvi mentioned that UNICEF will continue to work closely with the National Department of Education and other relevant departments to ensure that early child care education in the country is brought under the radar of the government planning and budgeting. UNICEF would want to do is support the different um, government departments with education, National Department of Education, uh, National Department of uh, Community Development, National Department of Health, and LIACI with the other uh, um, focal aligned departments like National Planning, Finance and Treasury, and Labor Department for all to work together to see that um, early childhood care development or education is also uh, being on the radar of government planning and budgeting and also see that um, National Department of Education um, review with uh, Department of Community Development on the ECCD policy and uh, develop ECC curriculum for early childhood care learning. Furthermore, UNICEF's commitment to driving early childhood care learning continues to remain a core area of its works in PNG. The organization has also conducted various researches on early childhood learning and reports these studies will be out soon. Um, so for what UNICEF has done, we have conducted uh, two, two research. One is on uh, validating early learning standards for three, four, five years old children. That research was done last year in 2013 and we have completed that uh, research and we're looking forward to the report that would be uh, ready by June. And the second research that we are working on currently, which we did nine provinces last year, this year it's going to be in 13 provinces. So we're doing um, a facility survey on um, the 
facilities on ECCD centers, whether they are daycare or um, ECC learning centers in the country, which are all run privately, either by church or individuals or business houses. So after, what UNICEF wants to do is develop, I mean, have the early, um, early learning standards for three, four, five years, and the minimum operating standards for the facilities on the ground, and move with the Department of Education and Community Development with the review of ECC policy and um, the curriculum, ECC curriculum in the country. In sharing the same sentiment on the Medang workshop, Priscilla Kare from the Education Advocacy Network and a workshop participant said the workshop was emotional as many of the participants came to discover that PNG for a long time has missed out on many things delivered at the workshop. One of the striking lessons from the workshop was on communication between parents and their children. We had this, um, what you call, practical sessions in Medan and found that we ourselves were quite emotional. We were emotional because of the fact that we could have done this earlier. We could have started uh, changing the behavior of parents to communicate to their children earlier. Previously, nothing like this happened until now, so our focus now is to change that whole communication trend in PNG. And the media is the best tool to do that. And we know that what we can produce for simple communication, basic uh, family union, as well as government to people mechanisms, you know, discussion about service delivery, discussion about early child care education and developing to a tertiary level. It's going to have a really huge impact. Now, with the commitment of the Education Department in materializing and sustaining what transpired during the Medang workshop, there is now a brighter future for early childhood care education in PNG. Furthermore, a professional network of creative talents emanating from the Medang workshop has a potential of revolutionizing a communication breakthrough using animation just like the famous children's TV program, The Sesame Street. And in the words of Barbara Kaluki, Papua New Guinea does have all the raw talents, but they just need to be activated. And that concludes this edition of School Belong You. If your friends or family have missed out on this episode, you can view it online at these web links. And the next edition of School Belong You will be in May next month. Thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.